another bright and cheerful day here in Alaska. I um, want to go over some material that uh, we didn't cover yesterday and I want to very briefly review what we covered yesterday. Uh, basically we described the American government and its three instrumentalities, the Union, the Federation, and the Confederation. And we reviewed the United States government, our three federal subcontractors, the Federal Republic, the British Territorial United States, and the Municipal United States governments. So basically, six different entities, three instrumentalities, three federal subcontractors, and for today, I wanted you to take a good look at the orange arrows here. As you can see, among the three American instrumentalities, the Union and the Federation all both stand under the Declaration of Independence. Whereas the Confederation stand under the Articles of Confederation. And over here, the federal subcontractors each stand under a constitution. Okay? Now, our, uh, our saying for the day, liberty cannot be preserved without general knowledge among the people. From John Adams. Okay? One of our great founders, one of the most committed men among all of the founding fathers, John Adams was a great proponent of popular edu education. So you didn't get this in school, but you're getting it now. So congratulations. You're fulfilling your part in the American dream here. Now, yesterday we briefly went over the different flags and we explained that the American flags are boxier, They're, they have a different proportion than the U.S. versions that they borrow from us under Title IV. And finally, we also have the municipal flag and we have the five jurisdictions. So how does this all sort out? Well, it sorts out like this. The municipal government is in charge of the air. The American government under the peace flag is under is in charge of the soil and land. The territorial government with the Title IV flag is in charge of maritime jurisdiction. And the Navy, the US Navy, is in charge of admiralty. So as you can see, there are five jurisdictions, four flags, and the land and the soil are at peace. They're flying the peace flag. The air jurisdiction is flying the municipal flag, which is an international city-state. The maritime is flying the Title IV British Territorial flag, and the Navy is flying the American flag. Now anybody who made it through Navy boot camp knows what this is about. The Title IV flag in Maritime is for the Maritime Merchant Marine Service, and the Navy, the actual Navy, is for the Admiralty Service. 
Okay, that's probably enough for you to observe and observe today on that particular part of it. So now we're going to discuss one of the most difficult and confusing of all the many confusing things there are about our government and its history. And it's one of the simplest, most fundamental, inescapable parts, and that is, what is the United States? Okay? Well, of course, we have our states. Everything comes forward from our states. So our 50 states are responsible for creating and funding and taking part in all of this in one way or another. But I'm talking now about the name the United States. All right, well, how does the United States become an entity, right? Well, it turns out that it started with the Dutch East India Company getting into a scrap called the 1702 Bottomry Bond Scandal, in which they basically made, made up fictitious names of ships with fictitious cargoes, insured them, and then uh, claimed that they were wrecked at sea and charged the insurance companies for all their losses. Uh, this was a big enough scandal so that they basically had to beat feet out of town, and so they moved to Boston and changed the name. And they changed it to the United States Trading Company. Makes sense, right? It all started with a scandal and some pirates having to escape town. Okay, so that was, that was part of it. Then, we have the United States Trading Company, and we see that it is American and continental European investors. We see that it's a variety of uh, nations involved in this. We have the Dutch, the Germans, the French, the Italians, <laughs> Spanish, Swedish, Danish, all sorts of, of European investors and American investors are involved in the United States Trading Company, but it's primarily continental European investors. And most of them have an affiliation with the Holy See or are Catholic companies or individuals who are Catholic. So this company has a heritage that is largely Catholic, often related to the Holy Roman Empire, and it contains both American and continental European investors from the very get-go. Okay, so then we come to what I call the Great Split. And what happened was that the The War of Independence took place, and the investors in the group had to make a choice about which side they supported. So you wound up in 1776 with the Tories who supported the British in the fight, and the Americans who were committed to freedom splitting off into two separate groups. Each one continued to call itself the United States. And so there have been at least two entities calling themselves United States ever since.
So from basically 1776 until 1851, the only way you can tell the difference between these two versions of the United States is from the context of the literature or reference that you're dealing with. They were styled the same way, with a small T-H-E, the United States. And each one of these played a role in founding the government. The American investor group, known as the United States, right, went on to form the Union, this fellow. Okay. Whereas the Holy Roman Empire group went on to form and give its name to this little guy, way over here in the corner, the municipal government that was formed in 1790. So this confusion between the Union and the municipal government finally got resolved in 1851, at least so far in, in terms of the style and nomenclature, when they officially changed the name of the Union to the name that it has now, where the is included in the name and is capitalized, the United States, its proper name in the English language. Okay, so this is important to know. This is another confusion. Another confusion had arisen because the American subcontractor, the federal Republic was popularly called the United States too. So at one time from 1787 to 1851 we had a total of three entities calling themselves the United States and they were all using the same style of name. How's that for a mind-boggling confusion? So let me set that up for you so you can see exactly what they are. Let's see here. 1776 to 1851. The Union. The big kahuna here was called the United States. And then we had the Federation it was also called the United States. And last but not least, we had the municipal government, all calling themselves just the United States. Can you see a confusion here? <laughs> Well, thank goodness they finally renamed the Union the United States. At least we got the benefit of a capital T on the to help us out a little bit. Otherwise, from the time period of 1787 to 1861, when the Federal Republic stopped functioning, there's a possibility that you could be talking about any one of these three when you're reviewing historical literature of the time period. So you always have to look at the context. What is the document talking about? What makes sense? Does it make sense that we'd be talking about the Union, the Federal Republic, or the municipal government 
given the subject matter. This remains one of the most confused and confusing parts of any study of American government. So I hope that I've helped shed some light on all of this, and I hope that you now have a better sense of our history and how convoluted it really is at times. Thankfully, not everything about it is this confusing. So, stick with me. It gets better. When we talk about the United States of America, things will be considerably simpler. Thank you.